You're listening to the Chronicles of Living Podcast, where we talk to everyday people about everyday things in the past, present, and future. Now let's talk. Greetings, 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 my visionary dreamers. This is Adion, your dream pusher, your lifeguard, saving you from the world, saving you from drowning in yourself. And I'm your dream pusher because I just want to push you off the ledge. Like if I really was behind you and your dream was just down the bottom of that hill, like I just need you to envision me pushing you, pushing you into your dream and your vision. That's what I'm about. That's what this podcast is about. This podcast, in case you're just tuning in, is a is for everyday people living everyday life, doing everyday things. And um, today's topic is I'm just gonna go right in. You know, I, I took a long. I just came off a long walk, basically in my backyard <laughs> for the new place. Um, that I reside at right now, and uh, you know, my colleague, my partner, my new partner in crime, <laughs> um, just was basically taking me on the grounds and showing me around. And um, it's like it's so beautiful, um, it's so beautiful. We, we, we were talking earlier today, um. And that's how I came up with the topic for today. Um, what have you learned from other people? What have you learned from other people? I'm, I'm really just going to go right in today because, for one, I didn't even really get a chance to really write down my little outline. So who knows where this podcast is going to go today. <laughs> I had the topic, but, you know, I try my best to prep, but because I just thought about it, um, we'll see what happens. Anywho. Yeah, um, we were just having a conversation earlier today and, um, you know, sharing some things with each other. And we both agreed that it's been a long time since we had um, met someone that we can kind of call a friend. I mean, even though we just met, I, I kind of feel like we, we are friends. I take friends very seriously, but it's just interesting how much we connect and how many thoughts we share um that we didn't realize and um we're learning a lot from each other just in sharing and um I definitely would would not share with you but <laughs> I was trying to convince her to just come on and have a conversation but I guess she was scared I'm gonna get her though I'm gonna get her anyway just you know thinking about not just me and her but we were just thinking about how much you can learn um, from just talking to other people and, and just hearing um, their stories because we all have stories. We all have backgrounds, rather good or bad. And as y'all know how I feel about saying bad, um, bad to me is really just an opportunity for you to learn something new um, about the way you're doing things, going about things, or about yourself, you know? And if you don't view it as being bad, then there's your opportunity to learn and to grow from it. So because we all we all have experienced some things that was just like, well, I'm going to say majority of us have (laughs) anyway, to my knowledge. Um, And it's just interesting to see from person to person as you listen to their stories how they handle their situations and their results from um, handling the situations the way they handle them. Um, the strength that people find within themselves to come out of a situation, to fight their way through situations and it could kind of sometimes is inspire you to look at whatever you're going through in life and, and say to yourself, well, I'm just be I'm just being a little whiner. Like, oh, my gosh, this person, you know, basically defeated that, 
this person got over that challenge, that struggle, that obstacle. We all view our lives as difficult for some, <laughs> to some extent. You know, a lot of us go through the whole, oh, woe is me, and this happened to me, and you don't understand. This is what I'm going through, and I got to deal with this, and I got to deal with that. But if you really look around at the world, you really look around at the world, and, and if y'all have been following me, y'all know I don't really do TV like that. Um... I really don't do the news too much. I just, you know, I kind of hear about it. I might check up on it a little bit here and there just to keep up, make sure there's no no murderers in the neighborhood or whatever. That Things to that knowledge or whatever and make sure, you know, um, the world is not coming to an end. But we all don't know about that day. Um, we'll see it if it do decide, if God decides to let it come. But nevertheless... If you really just take, forget about yourself for a moment, just forget about the things that you're going through for a moment, just for a day and look around you. I mean, really, really look around you. Rather, you just walking in the mall, walking outside, whatever, whatever you're doing, look around you. People watch, as my nanny would say. I love her, love her, love her. I miss her so much. She's the people watch, you know, like as she got up there in age and she couldn't really walk or whatever like that. She would love for my aunt to take her to the mall and people watching. That was she would get a kick out of that. She was just a happy woman. And she said, oh, you know, they are so funny. People can be so funny. You know, she found humor in that and she found enjoyment and just going to the mall, sitting there, people watching. You know, most of us would be like, "Uh, okay, yeah. But, you know, just in that, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from from my nanny that she enjoyed people, you know, like she passed away at 98 years old. But she always kept this happy spirit. She always just vibrated at a high level that anytime you came into her presence, you couldn't do nothing but smile. You couldn't do nothing but smile. It's not one time that I went to go visit my nanny that I felt depressed or that I, I walked in and I just felt a, 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 a darkness or anything like that. I've always, her and my, and my grandpa, I mean, my other grandparents, definitely I love them, but I know my other grandma, much as I love her, she, she always, <laughs> she would always talk deaf over herself or say, well, I might not be here next year just because she was aging. She felt like she was really aging where on the other hand my other my other grandmom she just felt like life can just go on forever and this is what I'm saying about what have you learned from people because here I have two different grandparents and they're both aging but both of them viewed aging in a different way one viewed it as just more life, just more opportunity to live, more opportunity to spread love, more time to laugh, more time to see things and see the world and enjoy, you know, her family and her friends. You know, my nanny used to still go to Atlantic City all the way up until her 80s. I think she was 80 something. And she, the, the little crew that still was alive, they would go to Atlantic City. You got young people that just like washed up and go to work and that's just that. And they tired and they don't want to go nothing, do nothing. But here's this lady in her 80s still driving and everything. And if it wasn't for her, she told me if it wasn't for her knee operation, she probably still would have been driving. And, you know, I learned from that. I learned that, you know, you have as much life in you as you believe you have, you know, as you want to have. You just because you turn a new age don't mean you're aging. You know, it's so many people in my new community that's so shocked (laughs) when they find out my age. When I find out that I have a son in college, I have a daughter, I have grandbabies. As soon as I add, first I say son in college, and it's like, what? Then I say something about my grandbabies. What? Like, what? It's like, wow, you look so young. You, yeah, wow, I would have never thought, I would have never figured that. But, you know, as I say, and as I've said on these podcasts, like, just, I don't do drama. I don't. I just, I don't care who you are. I love you. But if you want to come with some drama, if you want to get on my phone and you want to just complain and, 
oh, this, you know, like, don't get me wrong. Everybody got to vent. I vent, but it's just the way you vent and how long you vent. You know what I mean? Vent, get it out, get it over with. Let's talk it out. Let's leave it alone, you know? But I don't need you venting about the same thing time and time and time again because once you vent and you get it out and we talk about it, if you're not willing to do something about it, then there should be no more conversation about it. Because, you know, a lot of us, we do. We get caught up and we, you know what I'm saying? We, we get caught up in just looking at the situation and we just get so embedded in us and we, we lose ourselves. And then we, we're just like, there's no way out because this is the situation. But you could take somebody else and place them in that same situation and they will find a way out. And they will find a way out gracefully. And you would never know that they was in the situation. You know what I mean? Um, And I know that's all according to our strength, our inner being, and how just how much we believe within ourselves. Just how much we value ourselves. How much we respect ourselves. You know? And I always talk about that. You know, valuing yourself, respecting yourself, knowing that you are enough. And if somebody um, don't treat you as such then guess what they are not enough they are not enough to be around you they they shouldn't even be in your presence you know what I mean I mean I've learned and as I said before people expose you know who you are and I I talked about it on a different level you know you got ways that people can expose who you are by telling your business and trying to put you on front street and um, trying to make you feel bad about whatever you had in your past. Um, people can expose you in that way or people can expose you in a way to yourself where you just think and you say, hmm, I never looked at my life that way. I never thought about it that way. You know, um, perfect example, like as I, we were walking, me and my um, colleague, we were talking and um we both really share this. We both really love traveling and we both are free spirited people. And we got on a topic of basically manifesting things and, and, and when you want something and going out to go get it and things of that nature. And I have a, 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 a definite track record of when I want something, I go get it. And um, the thing as we were separating from each other and going our separate ways today you know she went on to do her thing I went on to basically come here and do this podcast I had a aha moment as Oprah would say and she taught me something about myself um while I always manifested the things that I wanted there are still things that I want and that is to travel. And I've been talking about that travel all across the world, different countries and stuff like that. And even though I've been, I've lived so many different places, guess what? I've never been out the United States. I've always wanted to, and it's been opportunities, but I don't know. Things would just always come up and uh, it just would never happen. And then, um, me and my son, we planned on going to New Zealand quite a few times, but it just never happened. So, um, I realized at that point and she, she, she don't even realize cause we didn't even, we, we left each other. But as I was walking away, I realized that, um, why haven't I just manifested the trip and really went, you know, like she has traveled all across, you know, she's been to a lot of different countries and, you know, I'm not going to talk about her background but she's experienced a lot of different countries and it's just so intriguing to me as she talks about the different countries that she has visited and, and things of that nature and I'm like wow you know okay I'm we we are both human beings and what is it that I'm not doing that I haven't traveled outside the country although for years and years and years I've been saying I'm going to go out the country and she shared something with me and she said you know secret is make the date and just buy a one-way ticket and this is something that I I heard before I can't recall who I heard it from I don't recall it but it's crazy I'm not gonna say crazy because I'm not crazy but you know that's why I say as cray as I am and as much as a 
as a risk taker as I am, I have not did that yet. But I learned from her that obviously there must have been something, you know, stopping me because I've manifest things. I manifest things. I didn't manifest. I've never manifest. Um... Uh, I guess the experience of a different country. I mean, when I say I manifest things, if I say I want a car, if I say I want that car, if I say I want a house, I've always manifested it. And God, I pray, of course, I always pray first, I always move by my faith. But if God put it in my heart and he touched my spirit to say what car dealer to go to, what house to go for, what I believe wholeheartedly it's mine already. I go into it that way. That's how I went into it with this whole new career, this opportunity. I went into it knowing that, okay, I knew in my spirit I really love nature. Um, I need a new life. And um, I started searching. And I believed when I came across the website, I, it felt up in my spirit that that was, that was it. And I went for it. And then when I went for it, it took a week to get everything situated, but I'm, I'm there since then, you know? So I manifest what I want, but I haven't manifested it to the level of actually traveling out of the country. And so now that's my next mission, y'all. You know, she taught me something today about myself that I, I manifest things basically for my needs all this time, for me and my, my, my kids' needs. Whatever we needed, I manifested it. When my daughter had her second baby, I knew she needed all of this stuff, you know, for the baby. And I manifested it. I'm like, okay, you're going to have it all. And when I say she had it all, she had it all. She had double of the playpens and strollers and all of this stuff. Like, I got it. And, and not only did I get it, I didn't pay no money for it. I just, she had everything she needed, everything. I manifested it because I believed that she was going to have it and I was going to be able to provide it for her. And I did. You know what I mean? So now my mission is that like, you know, yes, I've been playing and I plan, but I definitely got to set a date and um, I'm going out the country. I don't know. I have plenty of places I want to go, but I'm going to do it, you know, soon. Whenever the, op the opportunity is going to present itself, I'm about to do some law of attraction stuff, you know. But that's what we were talking about. And also, you know, as I, I think about, you know, the things that I've learned from people just in relationships and stuff, um, the fact that, you know, I used to sometimes pray, like, if I was in a relationship, like, and I knew that it was just like, mm, this is not working. I would pray for the person, like, you know, come on, you know, fix them. But, you know, you got to fix yourself, too. As I know now, you can't fix people. People got to fix themselves, okay? We cannot control nobody, nobody. But what I've learned from those relationships with the people that I was involved in, when I look back now, well, this is something that I learned from God. You know, also, he kind of saves you. He saves you from people. And I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, I I told you I'm cool with my exes. You know, like I got love for them. I want to see them all do good. We keep in contact here and there. But the bottom line is this. When people are not growing and not going in the direction of the path that you are, it can hinder you. I, I say that all the time. People can hinder you if you don't acknowledge it. And if you're not willing to know that you, there's more in you. And I'm not saying that those people, you know, okay, they hindered me. But they're going in a different direction. So whatever direction they're going in, they'll grow in that direction. But I'm such a free-spirited person that if I would have kept, you know, some of the friends and, and stayed in, you know, certain relationships, I know for a fact I wouldn't be where I'm at now. I wouldn't be meeting finally, finally, finally meeting like-minded people i've sat and talked to some of the people in my community and it's like i listen to their stories and how they even came to you know to the institute and all of that and it's like it's it's kind of similar a lot of them are travelers like me a lot of them have moved around and just been searching for something more like there is something more out here 
It's got to be something more, which it is. Because at the end of the day, we are all spirits and we're energy, vibration. We're souls in this shell, in this shell. Out here wanting to experience something different. We, we, we're out here looking for our purpose. Why are we here? And so if you pay attention to people and listen to them talk and listen to their stories, it, while you're listening, sometimes it can expo- expose something within you that you needed to learn about you. You know, some things is deep, dark secrets that all of a sudden you feel like this person that you're talking to, you can share with them something that you've never shared with anybody else for some reason. It could be a stranger. I've had so many people share things with me that I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. (laughs) Why are you telling me that? (laughs) But for some reason, they felt like they felt my spirit. They felt like I was somebody that would, you know, keep that and I can, you know, not judge them and just pretty much let them spill the beans and maybe maybe suggest but in some t- some cases it's just pretty much some people just need an ear you know some people just need somebody to hear them out and to just release what's been locked inside of them you know i've learned that our guru over the institute you know and going to the lectures you know you think about people of a higher spiritual being um that's you know more of a teacher i don't know you think google you think oh they just had this perfect little spiritual path and you know they never really had nothing bad happen to them but he's an author and he has you know many books out you know i think maybe like 14 books out and so i'm 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 just starting to read some of his books and um he has so many of them. I got to get the name. I'm, I'm going to need to put it on my blog. I'm going to put some recommendations on my blog. But I just started reading one of them. And in the first paragraph, I mean, the first chapter, he was just talking about, you know, his childhood. And he kind of had a little rocky childhood, a little tough childhood. And I'm just like, wow, wow, I can identify with this. And it just helps me into knowing that, you know, my path of going on to become a speaker myself and travel with it and the stories that I have in my background that yes it would help people because if he if what he's teaching and what his stories are are helping me I know that my stories can help others and I just you know I just hope that everybody get to the point that they understand that you all understand that The things that we go through in life at the end of the day are really not for us. And I know I said this in one of my podcasts, but I have to be redundant with some things that I say because for one, everybody don't listen to every podcast. But two, um, whenever it's on my spirit to repeat, then obviously it's somebody that needs to hear it, you know, that probably didn't listen to a podcast I said it in before, but you know, you you definitely are here on assignment. You know, you were picked for a reason to be here, to exist. So don't never, ever, ever doubt your existence. Don't never let somebody tell you that you were a mistake or that um, you're nothing or you're stupid or whatever. You're worthless. All of those words the people that speak it out their mouths understand them and learn from them because those people that speak it out their mouths that's what they feel about themselves that is what they feel about themselves so they're trying to push it off on you and they want you to feel the way they feel they are the ones that feel worthless they are the ones that feel stupid and all of this but they're trying to push all of that energy on you This is what I'm saying about what have you learned from people? Have you learned that? Have you really thought about that? Or did you just accept the words that they spoke to you and just take it on as who you are? Are you wearing that? You wearing those words that were spoken to you? Don't do it. Take it off. Take off the garments. Take off the shame. Take off all of that. Because 
I'm trying to tell you, that's one thing I've learned. I've learned that, you know, you be around a person that's vibrating at a low spirit, a low, you know, low energy. After a while, you're going to start vibrating that same way. Your, your energy, just everything is just, have you ever been in a room? And you just laughing, joking, talking to people and everything, just having a good time. And then all of a sudden somebody walks in and it's just like darkness just filled the room. Everybody stopped talking. You might not even know this person, but everybody just for some reason stopped talking and just look over at the person and then start feeling some type of way. Like your energy just shift from that one person coming through the door. That's how deep it is, y'all. That person is obviously carrying a lot of stuff in them that needs to be released. And they could come in and they can put off a front like they got it all together. They might have on the flyers clothes and shoes and all of this. Like they got it all together. But I'm telling you something. What you learn from them, from their energy, is what really is. Because... I just keep telling y'all and she is everything in there. If y'all don't believe me, y'all just just take a moment and start start really paying attention to how people act and the energy and the things that they go through and how they shift because of their energy. If they 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 lose a job or or if they get a brand new house and when they're happy and when they're sad and just just pay attention to them and how they react with that. And if their spirit is not in a, a balanced place and they're, they're not grounded enough and they don't understand what life is about and they don't understand that, you know, the things, the struggles and the obstacles that you go through in life is something that is is there to teach you, then their energy is just going to be all over the place. It's going to be all over the place. And if there's somebody close to you, you're going to feel it. And if you're close to that person that um, is off-centered and off-balance and you don't have a grip on you, it's just going to keep going on and on and on. Somebody got to step in and say, you know what, look, let's just analyze this situation. Let's find the good in this. Let's, you know, I mean, like when I look at relationships and and breaking up, you know, at the time you break up with somebody, oh my gosh, you feel horrible, like Rather be, uh, fortunately, I was able to walk away from the majority of my relationships, but rather be somebody walking away from you or whatever, you know, you feel horrible. Even though I've walked away from my relationship, I still feel horrible because I felt like, dang, I wasted that damn time, excuse my French, but I wasted time out of my life, which I could have been with somebody else that appreciated me or that, you know, we flow better. But I had to learn that, no, no, I'm going to stop thinking like that. And I'm going to look back at the relationship. And I'm going to look at, what have I learned from this relationship? What have, what have I learned about that person? What have I learned about me while I was in that relationship? What was it that I was able to tolerate that I wasn't able to tolerate? What annoyed me? What made me happy about that person? What did that person do that made me smile? What did that person do that made me angry? Because see, when you start examining that, that's how you can start growing within yourself. Because If you don't fix those issues within you, if a person can make you angry from their words or from um, some of the actions that they do, then maybe that might be something that you need to visit within yourself to make sure that you get to the root of why. Why is this so annoying to me? Why? 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 If this person want to go out with his with his boys every Friday or whatever like that, why is that annoying to me? Or why, um, you know, she she always on the phone with her girlfriends and talking. And when I come in from work and she's still on the phone with her girlfriends um, and not giving me the attention, why is that affecting me? You you got to start analyzing yourself and, and figuring it out. Like, people do show us who we are and people 
can teach us a lot of the things in the different areas in our lives that we need to reflect on and we need to, you know, start working on to, to become better, better beings and to give um, better energy to the world, to ourselves, you know. Uh, I can honestly say I look back now and I, I know that I've been saved. I've been I've been spared. <laughs> when I think about my son's father, uh, I think about the fact that I made that decision years ago. Like, OK, this is just not working. We out. We out. Let him do him. It wasn't because everybody thought, oh, you're horrible. You keeping him from. No, I never kept him from. You know, knowing who he was, I asked him every year, you want me to find him? You want me to, you know, because we, we moved out of state. And, you know, I left that decision to my son. I never put nothing on it. And I always told, I told him the good and the bad, you know, um, of who that person was. And, but the thing was, what I learned from him and from myself was that I was so in tuned with my spirit at the time of being with him. That even though I, I I stayed for a while, I knew, I knew that if I didn't get out of that, it wasn't going to end pretty good for me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was doing, I found out later on, he was doing things that really, he wound up going to jail for, but he could have had me caught up in a big, just because I was his wife. You know, my name could have been caught up in some stuff. And not only that, my son would not be who he is because this man is still in and out of jail. So, of course, a son want to look up to their father and sometimes want to follow the path, which one of my son's other brothers did. And he's been incarcerated already at a young age on and off because he wants to follow the path. You know what I'm saying? And I learned that he's eight years older than me, but yet he's still is trying to live that life. And so I just learned that you can't worry about what other people think. Because if I would have listened to everybody else, no telling where my life would have been. No telling where my son would have been. So I learned a lot from about myself and about my strength and about my determination, um, about my confidence with within myself, my confidence that I could do this by myself and I can raise a respectable, um, a great young man, an awesome young man. And I and with God's help, I did. I was able to, you know, my some of my family, you know, helped out. Um, definitely my mom. Um, but he's he's good. He's good. And so. That taught me a lot about who I am. It taught me a lot about the fact that I was able to walk away from so much and start from scratch. I was strong enough to do that, knowing that I was going to really have to, to, to do this on my own and raise a young man. And especially, you know, they say, OK, most of black young men with single moms, single moms don't have a handle on them. So that was a challenge in itself. You know, that whole statistics of you know a young black male being raised by a single mom um and incarceration rate and things of that nature whatever like that that was a, that was a challenge in itself me making the right decisions having a confidence within myself learning and knowing that this is all possible i just got to work harder you know so yeah, I just just wanted to remind y'all. I learned a lot. You know, we had our little um, residential appreciation day picnic yesterday. And so I was able to sit with the community and meet more people and learn about their lives and share. And and we just all kind of got into some little deep conversations and sharing our background, sharing how we got there. And um, it was just like, Wow. It's just interesting to see that when you know when you are surrounded with like minded people, because the last person that I was talking to, I mean, it was dark, but we were so into our conversation. But this community is so mixed and it's so, you know, mixed with culture, so mixed with far as young and old. And, you know, this 
this man was older than me, but yet we still were able to hold a conversation and connect and, and understand each other. Understand where each other was coming from. But I could have had this try, try to have that same conversation with some of my longtime friends or some of my family members. And guess what? It went right over the hill. Like, huh? What? What are you talking about? It, it, they wouldn't have been able to connect at all, at all. So that's what I'm saying. You know, y'all, um, if you are around people, rather be family or friends, you know, that just don't get you. I would encourage you to seek out people that do. Because that's the only way you're going to grow. That's the only way that you're going to start tapping into who you really are and the things that you need to work on within yourself to become a better, a better human being, a better spirit, a better soul. You know, when you get around like minded people, actually it helps you to heal and the things that you have been hurting in and the things that, you know, you've been pretty much suppression suppressing suppressing (laughs) for years to bring out some things you know um yeah I just that's just basically what I wanted to talk about today it's so funny I was training with um you know that one of the um the the head person that trains in the uh web department and uh far as our events and stuff (laughs) and So I was showing on the podcast and he said, wow, so much content. And I was telling him, he was like, well, what are you talking about? Like, what? I mean, how can you just talk for so long? How do you have all these podcasts in this short amount of time or whatever? Right. And I'm just like, well, I got a lot to talk about. I have a lot to share. I've lived a long life. And by the time he found out my age, he was just like, well, wait a minute. (laughs) So, yeah, it's it's. I think that everybody has a lot to talk about, to be honest. I think that pretty much if you if you are an open person, if you get to the point, because it took me a while to get to this point. I mean, I share with people that I, I that I felt, you know, I could to. And one one more thing I want to share, you know, because my time is winding down. When you you can, you know, your spirit can gravitate to a, a to a person to share with. And um, in some cases, you can share with that person. And in some cases, all of a sudden, and it's, it's happened, you know, all of a sudden, you're not friends with that person anymore. And in some cases, a relationship can end up rocky. And then they decide, I, sh- I talked about this on the social media part podcast. And then all of a sudden, they want to expose your information and um, put it all out there and try to make you look bad. If you feel really bad about it and you feel shame about it when they do call themselves exposing you, then that's another thing that you just learned from that person that you learned about yourself. You learned that you got to work on your self-esteem. You got to work on how you value yourself, because if you're concerned about people exposing you from your past and everything, that's not who you are now. Your past is not who you are now. Your past actually is what help you to become who you are and help you become a stronger, a a better person. If you use it as that, if you use the things that you went through as that. So the people that call themselves exposing you and putting your business out there are the people that are hurting inside themselves. That's another thing. They're hurting inside themselves. They don't feel good about themselves. So now they want to put you on blast. And they want to make everybody look down at you because they feel like people are looking down on them. Trust me when I say this. People act accordingly to how they feel about themselves. So you you get a person that got negative energy. That's just the way they feel about themselves. If you get a person that every time they come around you, you just get good feelings. You feel happy. Is Hey, it's real. That person is just... They happy, you know what I mean? Yeah, they're gonna have their bad days. I had my bad days, but for the most, I reflect on my bad days. I get through them. I talk it out with myself. I, Adrian, you know what I'm saying? And and one, <laughs> my 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 friend was even telling. She was talking about how she talk it out or whatever. And I was telling her sometimes I talk in third person too. <laughs> so it is. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to do. You know. Um. You know, I talk to the mirror. I told y'all plenty of times. I go right to my mirror and I, I 
ramp myself up. Listen, you could do this, hey, Dion. You can, you know, this is not a thing. This is not an issue. You got this, you know. So whichever way you need to do it, but understand this. Anything that makes you feel uneasy that a person does, that makes you feel some type of way that a person does or a person says, it just that it just expose to you the thing that you need to work on within yourself. So I'm gonna leave y'all with that food for thought. Things that make you feel uneasy that a person does to you or a person says to you exposes the things that you need to work on with inside of you. So think about that. You know, go on, get you some paper and a pen. And start writing out some things. Start remembering and recalling, you know, things that a person did, said, or whatever um, that made you feel some type of way that that you still feel in some type of way about. Because those are the things you need to start working on today to make you become a better you tomorrow. So with all of that being said, I hope you enjoyed this podcast as I hope that you enjoy them all. This is Adion, your dream pusher and your lifeguard. This is the Chronicles of Living. I need y'all all all to, you know, like me, follow me, all of that good stuff. Help me out. Follow me on the Spreaker thing. I don't know how neither. It's kind of confusing, but (laughs) whatever, you know. But I just appreciate appreciate you all. Just understand that. I appreciate the downloads, the the listens because it lets me know that you're interested in what I'm talking about and um, that hopefully is helping you out or it's helping a friend. Make sure y'all share. Sharing is caring. And um, just Google Chronicles of Living without the G, Chronicles of Living podcast and the stuff should come up and just go venture out, y'all. Check me out everywhere, wherever. I really would love to hear from y'all. And definitely, definitely inbox me on topics. Inbox me on whatever. I love you guys. And y'all definitely have an awesome week. And I will talk to y'all on Sunday at 7 o'clock. And I guess I'll be doing the podcast at 6.30 on Monday Monday and Wednesday from now on. And I'll update that. Okay? I'll talk to y'all on Sunday. I love you guys. Have an awesome, awesome week. And remember to stay true to you, boo. Stay true. Thank you for listening to Chronicles of Living, where we talk to everyday people about everyday things in the past, present, and future. And if you are pursuing your dreams, I'm proud of you. Because the best part of life is when you decide to live. To keep up with us, please visit chroniclesofliving.com. Until next time, this is Adion, your dream pusher. I love you guys.